Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I found a piece of gold in the trash. I found a Four Moms Mama Roo, which if you guys have been around um, labor and delivery, the uh, pediatrics areas, it's an automated rocking system to put your baby to sleep or to occupy them. They're wonderful. They're in hospitals everywhere. They're in homes everywhere. It's a genius device. But apparently it's got a flaw. I found this one in the trash. It was sitting next to the road just as I was coming home. And I nabbed it because I'm really curious if it's really broke, what is the nature of the failure? Because we have these things all over the place in medical facilities. And it would be good to know where they fail so that we can maybe be proactive about it or solve the problem without throwing them out. So let's go ahead and take a look, guys. I have this one here already kind of broke down, but uh, that's okay because I had some rattling going on inside the case. There's some of these rods and whatnot, and it was shaking around. I was like, okay, that doesn't sound right, but you guys know me. I, I'm all about that hustle, and I'm very curious just naturally. So even if I didn't have the ability to fix this one, it had the charger with it. More than likely, the charger's not bad. Or if the charger was bad, then this would be good. They're almost never both broke. So if this was broke, unrepairable, but I had a charger, I could clean the charger up and I could put that thing out on eBay for probably 20 or $30. And I would make 20 to 30 bucks off just the charger because a Mama Roo charger, I mean, think about it. Your cats and dogs can chew on them. The cord can get yanked. All sorts of stuff could happen in the home. And people don't want to throw out their Mama Roo, so instead they would look to eBay or someplace like that to buy the charger. So, at the very least, I have that. But I found a problem. And it's a problem that is solvable. So guys, I'm going to walk you through the process of how to take one of these Mama Roos apart so that um, we could maybe fix these problems going forward. Okay, so here it is. Here's how I took apart a Mama Roo. It was not the easiest thing in the world. But once you know the process, it's way, way easier. Okay, so at the very first, I wanted to take apart the bottom, okay? So the bottom is, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess, okay? Um, this one has been out in the weather, and you can see that there's a bunch of debris in the bottom of the pan. So uh, one of the first things I did is I removed all the perimeter fasteners, and there's two of them right here in the middle, and that allowed the bottom to separate. Now that the bottom was separate, I flipped it over so it's standing up normally. And what you have here are two tracks. And you have these metal rods. You have these metal rods that the rollers go back and forth on so they're like linear rails. And these here are just keepers. So what I did is on one side, I take out these two screws and I uh, basically just loosened them up. I came over to the other side. You can see how dirty this guy is. I took out these two fasteners and then there's one little uh, crank arm that goes right here and it acts as uh, like an eccentric gear and that is what pushes it back and forth. So there's one Phillips head screw right here. You take that one out, flip the arm off of this. Now it freely goes back and forth and now that it's free to go back and forth, now you can separate the unit from the chassis. But before you can do that, remember we have electronics. So here you have, uh, what, eight screws? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like that. You got a series of Phillips screws that hold the control panel in. So you wanna be able to take those screws out so you can flip the control panel up and over and get to the, the connectors at the bottom because these connectors right here are for your chassis to go back and forth all right so the next thing that you're going to do is take out there's a little phillips head screw right here and there's a little l bracket there's a little bracket like this and that is keeping your cables down and so your cables run down through here it screws right here and then those cables go up here to the control board well i want you to take this out Pull the cables all the way out so they're just weeble wobbling in the breeze. And then you go to one side, 
and you take this guy and this guy and you can pull them up. You can see how much they move. So all you do is pull it up and then um, there's little ears, there's metal ears or rollers on the chassis, okay? And you're going to basically get it outside and sit it on top of the seat. See that? So normally it's inside, you're gonna pull it up and put it on top and then you're gonna do the other side. Pull it up and on top and then flip it over to the other side Pull it up, stick it on top. Last one, stick it up on top. Now you got all those roller guides up and on top. It'll just lift off. That was the easy part. Let's get to the next part because here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So this guy should look familiar. This is the rock and rolling head that controls where the baby sits. It's the hammock. So here are the hoops. The hoops have spring-loaded retainers right here and right here. So there's two holes up here, and then there's two holes right here. You're going to, uh, while slightly pulling out on it, push something into that hole, and then you'll pop it out. So you get both your hoops out. Once both your hoops are out, then you got to get this right here, which is the bow, and come on, come on, I didn't put it back in, did I? I did. Okay. So then this cap right here has to come off, and you can see that there's a tiny little retention piece right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to shove a tool up and inside there, pop it, that, so this guy will come off your bow. All right, so now that the bow is loose, make sure that you release the latch and the bow should slide right out, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and stick that guy over there. Now you're gonna have two Allen screws and I think they're three millimeter. They might be 2.5s, 2.5 or three millimeters. So you take these two Allens out and then there are four Phillips head screws that are underneath where the bow was. And then this lip right here, it's got these plastic clips. So what I did is I stuck this little guy right here, right here, right here. You can see the four loops. So right here, right here, all the way around. And just pop those. And now the top cover will come off. Once the top cover comes off, you will find that the skirt will come right off. Now you're into the inner workings. And now we are almost down to where we can see what the failure was. All right. So right here, these are telescoping. So we will pull them off. See, I got a wiring guide right here. I'm gonna pull the wiring out. All right. So all the wires will fall through. Hey guys, if it appears like this guy is incredibly dirty, that's okay. It's plastic. It washes. It, it'll be absolutely fine. As long as the control board's fine and all the uh, brackets on here are good, we can save this. Fine. There we go. Okay. There we go. The wires feed through that hole. So that's the whole entire skirt. And this is the mechanical complex to the whole thing. And this is also where the problem is. All right. So let's show you exactly what's going on. So you see these rollers right here. And you can see how it just wobbles back and forth. There is no nut inside there that I can tell. See that? So what happened is these rollers fell out. You can see it's missing one over here and it's missing one over here. So there should be a pin that the screws in and holds it up. And those pins are what I found floating around inside the chassis. So the pins are threaded 
It doesn't look like there's any damage to the threads. See that? So what I can do is get some contact cleaner and spray this guy out really good. The pins will go back right here at the bottom of the chassis. And this time, use Loctite. So really, these fasteners are just coming loose. And they're just coming loose because of wear and tear. It's been used. So this isn't a piece of normal maintenance, but that's okay because if you ever do have like a rattling problem or it squeaks or it's not locking the bow down, well, it's not locking the bow down because everything's just flopping in the breeze. So guys, if you ever have a concern with these devices, go ahead and open it up first, check it out, and see if all your fasteners are coming loose because I bet you that they are. And if your fasteners come loose, then it's going to stop working. It's going to rattle and you might actually snap some parts. Now I noticed right here is a crank arm and see how this one popped out because the whole chassis is torqued. See how it's kind of torqued over that way? And that means that it's not linear. And since it's not linear, this guy here just, just able to pop out. So I've got to make sure that this guy's back on I'm going to put the fasteners back here, re-secure this one, and these ones that are not off yet, I'm gonna pull those out one by one and clean them and then replace it with uh, a, a new fastener that's Loctite in. So you can see I have one remaining shoulder screw right here. That's where one of those bars is supposed to go. I'm really surprised. Here's one that has not broken yet. But that's it, completely fixable. I'm, of course, going to clean it all up. I've got uh, some parts cleaner. I'm going to spray it down with some of that, uh, that WD-40 contact cleaner. Clean it really good. Re-lubricate the ways and lubricate the gearboxes. And right here, you can see these are some linear guides. And once it's all lubed back up, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. Spray down the skirt. Clean all that. And then I'm probably going to give this one away to a needy family. So there you have it. It's not really broke. We can fix it. It just takes a little bit of love. Guys, I hope you learned a little something about the Mama Roos. They're really not that complex, but it takes a little bit to get into the chassis. Once you're inside, you can solve the problem relatively easy. There is not too much that breaks on these. Upon reassembly of the unit, you can see here, I've got it going back together. I realized that this unit here did not have to declamshell. I said earlier to shove something in there and break open those latches. Well, that doesn't have to happen. Just make sure when you reassemble that that latch goes to the rear. If it's on like so, it should be pretty easy.